Hi, welcome back to EducateTube.com. My name is Sifsky, your host. Today, I'll be showing you how I charge my alkaline batteries. As you can see here, I have many of them. I'll show you how to do it properly and some tricks and what to look out for when you do charge your alkaline batteries. Now, the reason why you want to do that is that we have so much alkaline battery that we throw away and don't realize that there is still a lot of energy capacity in these batteries and it can be recharged if you do it properly. Let me show you right now how to do it. All right, so this battery here, the alkaline batteries, you think that it's one time use. And even the label said, you know, do not uh, recharge it because it might explode. Well, that is not completely true. If you know how to charge it properly, you can actually charge it. Now, let me remind you that once you recharge it, you can't have the same capacity what it, you originally have. How it works is that when you recharge it, it will uh, gain some energy, but not in its original state. You have some energy uh, coming into this battery when you recharge it, but what am happening is that you can use it still, but for uh, low drainage uh, technology or devices. So again, let me show you what devices you can use when you do charge it. For example, you can use a FM AM radio. This one I can uh, put my AA battery in there and it will work. Okay? So it's a low drain battery. You can also use it for powering your LED light. For example, I'll put my AA battery in here. Let me show you right now. So you need four AA battery. So this gives you six volt. This is all alkaline recharge battery, by the way. I just recharged it a couple of days ago. So here we have now four AA battery that's recharged in here and I can power my LED light. Okay, so LED light, FM, AM radio, you can also charge your clock, you can charge that and you can also charge your calculator. Now, depending on what type of calculator you have, this one runs on a triple A batteries, two of them. So very convenient that I can recharge my triple A battery and get my scientific calculator to work. So you just need to figure out a device that actually runs on uh, alkaline batteries. So you have to figure out what kind of devices uses alkaline batteries, especially the low drain devices. They use alkaline battery, but they use low current. So they're able to run for a long, long period of time. So LED lights, FM, AM radio, clock, and calculators are ideal candidates for rechargeable alkaline batteries. Now, normally I would use the rechargeable alkaline batteries to recharge the alkaline battery, but I want to be able to recharge these alkaline battery that's being used up. So that's the key here. So what you want to do is, this is what you need, okay? So you need an alkaline rechargeable device like this one here. This one I was able to get around four bucks. You can see pure energy, pure energy. So that's the first thing you need. The second thing you need, of course, is the adapter, okay? The adapter that you want, right, the AC to DC is five volt, 500 milliamp current that's running through it or less. Okay, between, I would say between 150 milliamp to 500 milliamp. So I decided to use a 500 milliamp and it's much, uh, it will charge much faster. In addition, you should also have a timer as you can see here. I have a timer, right? So set up the time for four hours. So what I do is I'll set four hours timer so they'll turn on for four hours and it will turn itself off. And then I would then plug it. Notice how I have actually two of these uh, adapter so it can charge simultaneously to save time. Eight alkaline batteries, okay? So we have these and you open up one of them. There we go, you have four and four, that's eight. So I'm able in four hours charge eight alkaline batteries. So that's great, right? So that, you know, save you so much time and you know you're thinking like four hours is a bit too long but if you have eight alkaline battery charge at the same time that means that you can charge quite quickly because the more alkaline battery you can charge within that given time four hours uh, you won't be wasting your time at all and it's worthwhile recharging your alkaline battery as you can see here I do have a set of them okay and I'll continue on to recharge this apparently I was checking online that some people say that it can charge eight times and then start to leak. I haven't experienced that yet. So I'll let you know in the future. But my method actually works really well. It's able 
to, for example, charge for four hours, and then the clock would stop, and then I will next day pick it up, and then I'll check using my voltmeter. That's something that you might want to have as well. Now the voltmeter doesn't tell you the capacity of the battery, but it does tell you the health of the alkaline battery, okay? So when you check the voltage, it will say, you know, for me, I, I get between 1.3 volt to 1.5 volt, which is good enough for low drain uh, devices like LED light or uh, FM, AM radio or clocks, right? So these are okay and you can last for weeks, depending on how uh, uh, regular you use the uh, devices on these rechargeable, well, now it's rechargeable alkaline batteries. Now what I want you to realize also that be careful with these alkaline batteries. You have to check the state of it before you recharge it. The first thing you need to note is that there's no leakage in the original alkaline battery, okay? So if you're gonna recharge it, check whether there is um, you know, salt buildup, white salt buildup, or there's a liquid coming out of it. If it does have it, don't recharge it. It's no good at all. The second thing is when you uh, recharge it, make sure it's the same type of company recharge when you're recharging at the same time. So making sure that they are the same brand on the same container here, uh, the rechargeable uh, devices, right? So put all the same brand in the same uh, rechargeable devices and also make sure that the voltage reading when it starts out are relatively similar, okay? Now, I didn't have any problem when I had one that was three, 400 volt and then the other one was almost a thousand. I put together, it was okay. But I would say I would recommend that you have a voltage uh, across being around, you know, the same reading, okay? That would be better for the health of the battery and it prevents from, you know, different uh, current running through these battery and causing resistance, okay? so. Ideally, you would have the same, but it doesn't really matter for me anyway. I put it in and I, I still can charge these batteries. I noticed that the brand name alkaline battery tends to do worse than, you know, the no name brand or the not so familiar name. Uh, they're much better in terms of how it's sealed. I'm not sure why. I was looking at the Duracell and maybe even Energizer. Uh, they don't recharge well, but whereas you have these no name brand, which is like Great Value one or Kirkland one, uh, they seem to charge really well, okay? Another thing you want to look out for other than the buildup of leakage or salt buildup here that you don't want to use is that when you charge it, like after four hours, you check the voltage and if you notice that it's fluctuating, it's decreasing really rapidly, that means it's not holding this charge, okay? Let me show you right now what I mean by that. So if I check the, see if I can show you while I'm holding the battery, it's kind of hard here, but hopefully I can do that. Let me just see. There we go. Okay, so notice it's fluctuating it's really quickly, you see that? That's no good, okay? So uh, if you charge it and you notice that the voltage is dropping quite rapidly or slowly dropping, it shouldn't drop that fast. That means that you shouldn't recharge it again. You might wanna throw it out. It might leak in the future or that there's something in it that's not working properly. The chemical inside uh, doesn't allow it to store the capacity of the energy that's transmitted from the charging unit to the battery. So I would say disregard this as well. So anything that's leaked, anything that has a salt buildup and anything when you charge it for four hours and then it's still not holding its capacity, the voltage is dropping, you can disregard that. But the rest of them was doing pretty well. As you can see here, 90% of my batteries or more actually charge really well. So it works for me, okay? All right, let me show you how I would set it up. Let's hook it up to my power cord. Okay, here's it timer as you can see this is the timer I want to reset it first okay, there's a little button here I can just press there I go and reset it next thing I want to do is to program it okay let's see to four hours so let's press set to change the time bring it up oh, bring it up one two three four four hours and press CD now again depending on your timer that you have this is to start it and there we go as you can see it's counting down and it's gonna count down four hours and then uh, let's turn off notice I have two five volt 500 milliamp uh, connected to my charger okay so there it is so what I do is I'll just take say four alkaline batteries of the same type okay usually you want the same type and even the same voltage range if possible I don't normally do that because I don't really know how much it's drained but if you're using the same devices, usually it's in uh, the same amount of current and voltage, right? So you may get the same uh, voltage reading or relative similar. But sometimes, you know, you get different devices 
and uh, you put it in and it may have different voltage reading I think it's okay okay just have to monitor it this thing will shut itself off anyway after four hours and it's uh, charging at very low current between I think it's maximum 300 milliamp running across here for four hours and I noticed that it goes from less than uh, 1000 milliamp all the way to close to almost 1500 milliamp okay on these battery after four hours so it's really useful because even 1300 milliamp can be used in LED lights and even my FM AM radios and my clock and you can be utilized for you know weeks right depending on how regularly I use those um, devices but there we go it's done and we'll just wait for four hours you can see what time is it now see we have another three hours and 58 minutes to go all right cool and this actually works for me quite consistently notice I have now eight alkaline battery can charge in four hours and I'll put another eight in there so yeah this is the best way to charge your alkaline battery uh, I have done this in the past but never this organized so now it's quite organized it's guaranteed that it's very safe and if it does leak I will clean up right away but so far there's only one time it leaked and that was my small triple A battery and that's because it was using I didn't know it was a zinc type of batteries so this is meant for alkaline right nothing else so make sure it's alkaline battery sometimes it doesn't label it if it doesn't label it's alkaline battery most likely it's not alkaline okay so make sure it's alkaline battery that you're trying to recharge so hopefully uh, you enjoyed this video don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you soon try to reduce reuse and repurpose your stuff okay so that you know you save money and also in the long run save the environment thanks for watching educate2.com bye